This morning's guest will be talking about a subject that you never want to talk about. Find out what it's all about coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Puckett, Sheets, and Hogan, the Grand Strand's largest independent insurance agency on 21st Avenue North in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the after-death industry. And we're visiting with Rick Neal, a funeral director and embalmer. Good morning, Rick. Good morning. Good morning. And, the, and a soon-to-be birthday boy. you got a birthday this week, Rick. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday. How's that feeling to turn uh, 49? 29. 29. Oh, 29. 29. <laughs> yeah, be, be 52. I'm, hey, the Lord's blessed me good. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's great. I like it when them birthdays come around. You're going to be 52 this Thursday, Rick. Yes. Sure. Wow, that is yeah. amazing. That yeah. is amazing. We were at Villa Romana last week and talking to the uh, the owners, uh, one of the owners there, and she had mentioned that she just turned 39, which is the age of infinity. Yeah. She's going to stay 39 forever because it was before 40, <laughs> but you're proud of being 52. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, because you look like so, say, so good for there, 52. There you that's go. That's what it is. The, you know, the, the Lord blessed you to live that long. Yeah. And with my family, you know, and my grandchildren and everything, I'll tell you what, I'm blessed, blessed, yeah. very much blessed. Absolutely. You have grandchildren, Rick. Yeah, yeah. What are their ages, and where are they? Oh, actually, with my grandchildren and step-grandchildren, there's six of them. Is that right? Yeah, six. I don't think I knew that. And and uh, my daughter Alicia has three stepchildren, and uh, they're in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Great. And then... My son Aaron, he has two, Reed and Holly, and then Georgetta, my daughter, she has Caleb. So, got six grandchildren, buddy. That is tremendous, Rick. Yeah. And you've got uh, you've got four children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like I say, Paul, Aaron, Georgetta, and Alicia. That is very exciting. Where all are they, Rick? Uh, Aaron's here. He owns Southern Construction Remodeling. Right. Right. And and he does business here. Him and his wife Alice. Oh yeah. And uh, then uh, Georgetta, she's here. She's a nurse at Grand Strand. Great. I've got my Grand Strand Regional Medical Center pinned today. Yeah, You'll yeah. Have to tell her. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then <clears throat> Alicia, she, her and her husband Sean lives in Augusta, and uh, she's a diamondologist with Windsor Jewelers, and he's with uh, Dillard's Corporation. He's the operations manager over there. Tremendous. And uh, then Paul, he's up in Kentucky, in our hometown up on the farm up there, and he's with Toyota. Is that, and you grew up in Kentucky, Kentucky, Rick. Yeah, yeah. little town called Pine Knot, Kentucky. Pine Knot? Pine How Knot. How big is Pine Knot? Well, it's little. It's little, yeah. <laughs> it's little. The whole county has 16,000 people. You know how every little t town has all these little names, you know, that's right. not postal things, but... Uh, we always laughed and we said, uh, that people say, where's Pine Knot? We'd say, well, that's between Mud Cut and Toe Wad. Oh, come on. I swear. You're kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm telling the truth. You're, you're between Mud Cut and Toe Wad? Toe Wad. W-A-D. Toe Wad. Yeah. <laughs> I would not be telling people that. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's next to Wheelie City, Kentucky. So. Do you still have family up in Pine Knot, Rick? Oh, yeah. My mama. My mama, and she just came down this past weekend, yeah. her and my stepfather, mm -hmm. and spent the weekend, and, and we went to uh, see the Carolina Opry and, great. and stuff with them. So had a great, great time. What does she like to do when she's down here, normally do stuff like that? Oh, yeah, just, opera? yeah, and, you know, <clears throat> she just, uh, we're just like two little pups together. You know, we just walk together and talk together all the time and, and have just a great time. She likes to go to the beach and 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 sit around on the beach. Mom's 72 years old. Yes, yeah, she said. You have brothers and sisters, Rick? No, no, I'm my only child. Just you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm my only child. That is uh, so, significant for her then to see her only child. And mom's she's baby boy. Yeah. Mom's baby boy. Her one and only. That's yeah. amazing. And your wife, Bonnie, is she from that area as well? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> Bonnie and I mm. grew up together, went to school together. Dated in high school. Oh, come on. Yeah, come at, come at Ace of getting married in high school, right after high school. And, and then I went to the military and, and left. And then while I was gone, I 
did my thing. She did hers. She got married. When I came home from the military, I got married. And then 24 years later, we got back together and, and got married. That is amazing. Been, what been an incredible together, story. Been together 10 years. 10 years. You're all celebrating your 10th anniversary yeah. this year. Yeah. That so, is so exciting. Yeah, buddy. She's a good woman. She works at the university. I know. She was so kind to line up Coach Cliff Ellis, that coach yeah. of Clemson. I think they sure. work together. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's his secretary. Okay. Great, great. So, which was a great open door opportunity for us. He was a tremendous interview. We loved so much having him in. Yeah, the he, first week of he's a, he's a nice guy, and boy, he's working hard. Out, Bonnie talks about how hard he works. Oh yeah, getting things together out there, you know, right. for this new ball team. Or the that's exactly right. Well, I think he he actually inherited many of the folks there right. getting ready for the new season. Mm -hmm. I think they're getting ready for a big new Coastal Carolina arena mm -hmm. a couple of years from now, which would be exciting to play in there. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, Bonnie says he's real strict on everything. Said Is that he, right? Said he, you know, makes him toe the mark, buddy. Mm-hmm. So, Good for him. Yeah. He's had some experience there. Yeah. Just like you in the funeral home business, Rick, I think I saw you been in it for 34 years now. Yeah. Yeah, I started uh, right while, while I was in high school. Started working with the local funeral home up there in McCurry County, and uh, McCurry County Funeral Homes where I started at. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, we run ambulance service because that's back <clears throat> before they had paramedics and all that on ambulances. Mm -hmm. We uh, we used to have it's called a combination hearse ambulance. Mm -hmm. In the back, the seats would fold out, right. and it had a place to put a cot and carried oxygen and stuff back there. And then whenever you had a funeral service, you fold the seats back in, take the oxygen and all that out. Mm. And it had you know big red lights on top and. Really? Those big old sirens, like I say, now that's been a long time ago. That's when yeah. sirens was about this long and under the hood of the big Cadillacs. And they'd start winding out, and just, you know, when you'd stop, it'd take them a few minutes to wind down. No, you'd hear that yeah. siren still going off. Yeah, it, you know, it, it reminds you, and <clears throat> it's, it's funny when I hear it, because it makes me think of those every time on Andy and Mayberry, when Barney gets that... Wow. Siren wound out. Right, That's right. the same kind of sirens it was. That's hilarious. Yeah. Wow, Rick. Yeah, sure was. You miss those days with the sirens. Uh, oh yeah. The early yeah. days of getting in the business when you were in high school and. Uh, yeah, but there's been so much advanced stuff in the funeral business now, mm -hmm. and uh, it's well, I'm getting ready to leave uh, and fly out to Las Vegas to the National Funeral Directors Convention this upcoming weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because uh, uh, you know there's just so much stuff. That, that you know need to do and need to right. look at and, right. and go through and so many changes that can be made. So, oh yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna go out there and and I'm interested in the exhibit, you know, and then right. we're just flying out for three days. Good. Anything in particular you're focusing on or just everything? Well my future. Yeah, good. Set the so, stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've you know I have aspirations about what I want to do mm -hmm. here in Myrtle Beach. So good. So, Myrtle Beach is a great area. You know, it really is. Yeah, it's buddy. a great area. And so many tremendous operators. Obviously, you've got long-time family commitments like the Goldfinch family who have been in it more than 100 mm -hmm. years. Steve McMillan up there on 67th Avenue, I right. believe, who's been in it for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Who knows how long, for a long time. And Alan Lee, you know, up there in Little River area who's been in it for a heck of a long time. So many great dedicated families as well as in Loris and Aner and all the funeral homes in the area that really make a difference in people's lives. That's right. That's right. Uh, and they're good. They're all good funeral directors. I mean, they're they're committed to and dedicated to what they do. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there have been, you know, some new funeral homes like out in Aner and uh, Johnson Funeral Homes built. It's a new funeral home. And then... Uh, Wards built one up in uh, in Loris Palmetto Funeral Home over yeah, in Palmetto, mm -hmm. which you had, I think, run for uh, for a short while, and of course, right. uh, so many that are up and down the strand. And I think one a question that a lot of folks ask, you know, when they're thinking about if someone dies here mm -hmm. and they need to, and their family is somewhere else, what happens? How do they go about getting their their loved one from here to somewhere else if they're if they die and, and they want to get them back to New Jersey, let's say. Well, you know, there's different different ways of doing it. You know, uh, down here, a lot of people opt for cremation. Is that right? So, you know, we can we do the cremation, 
get all the permits and get everything signed and everything. We do the cremation, then after we do that, um, we can ship them, you know, the fly of the ashes to them right. or whatever, or uh, mail them. But then <clears throat> if they want a service up there and they want to have a visitation mm -hmm. or, or a ground burial or entombment in a mausoleum or something like that, we pick up the body, we embalm it, we prepare it, we put it in a casket, you know, family comes in, we put them in a casket. And then if sometimes, now a funeral director may call me from up in, say, New York, and just wants us to pick them up mm -hmm. and ship them up there. Then family's not here. Family's not associated with it. We deal directly with the funeral home up there, the funeral up director. There, yes. yes, right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. What are some of the things a family member should be looking for in a funeral director when they're trying to figure out on the shipping side? What are some of the things that that a family member should be looking for? Well, a funeral director can do a lot of things for the family. And when uh, when when the loved one dies, you know, the funeral director's got to get the death certificates and all that stuff mm -hmm. for them. When you say that, the death certificates, what do you mean? All right. To file estates, insurance, mm -hmm. you have to have a certified copy certificate of death. Mm -hmm. Now that has to be filed by the medical examiner or the coroner right. and the funeral director. And then we take it to Conway, to the Department of Vital Records, and they certify it. And believe you me, a, a lot of people think, well, I'll get one death certificate and I'll make copies. Mm -hmm. The paper that they have that they use, you have to pay for these copies. The first copy costs $12. Mm. And if you get more at that one time, it's three dollars per copy. Now, if you right. wait and go back the next day and start over, it costs twelve dollars again. Now, but if you try to make a copy of it, the paper turns out a dark gray, with copy, copy, copy all over. It's all Is it says. Is that right? Yeah, That's you can't. Yeah, you can't make a copy of a death certificate. Mm -hmm. So, but you need a death certificate to file insurance and all that stuff with. And for the cremation, you have to have a death certificate signed for that. Mm -hmm. Death certificate is one of the first things you got to do. So the funeral director is the only one who can go about getting that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right has to be signed with the funeral home. And you have to put all the information, you know, like the name, the date of birth, the date of death, uh, where the burial is going to be, or if it's going to be a cremation, uh, what their address was, all of that stuff. Cause of death, all of it's on there. If someone dies and they're going to be cremated, do they still go through the embalming process for that? Well, sometimes. You, uh, some families want a traditional type service, mm -hmm. but then they don't want ground burial. So they'll buy a casket, or rent a casket. You can rent a casket also. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what it is, it has an insert that goes. The, the end comes out of the casket, and it has an insert that slides in. Mm -hmm. And you can, and after the visitation and after the funeral service and everything, you just take the end out of that casket, and that insert slides right out with the body in it. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that's if you want to rent it. Uh, but you, you know, a lot of people just opt for just direct cremation. Right. They don't want any type of you service. When you say direct cremation, you mean just having the cremation, no service. Right. Mm -hmm. We pick the person up, bring them to the funeral home, and family comes in, signs all the permits. We get everything signed from the corner, get certificate of cremation and all that, and we do it. There's a 24-hour waiting period after they sign, the family signs everything. Is that right? Yeah. You have to wait 24 hours? Yeah, because it's this a, is a change. heavily regulated industry. Isn't Very it? much, by the Federal Trade Commission. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> everything is is everything is is on paper. I mean, and it has to go through the state, and everything is watched over very carefully. Mm -hmm. Just like with with money for pre needs. If right. a person comes in and wants to pay in advance for their funeral and save costs, that's which is an excellent way for people to do. do folks do that often? Very much. Really? Very, very much. And you do you recommend it? I mean let's say you weren't in the funeral industry. Yes. Is that something you'd recommend? Is that oh, something yes. you did uh, or you've encouraged family members to do on their own? Y yes, I mean we have that taken care of with my parents. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, we uh, of course, I have insurance to something that must happen to me or my family, sure. but <clears throat> it's it's pre need is is an excellent way to do because you go today and you buy the service, mm -hmm. you buy you pick out whatever you want, and by that way, you can save money because a lot of people does not want to put so much money into right. You lock down the that. price right. now. You sure. lock down the price, and so and you live twenty years that funeral home that you choose. Will still 
do the service for that price. Is that right? Yes. That's mm -hmm. tremendous. Yep. That's tremendous. Is that a pretty reasonable? I mean, it's definitely something you encourage, but is it a pretty, uh, the costs associated with funerals are, can be substantial. That's right. And that's one of the reasons that you need to pre need. Right. Because right. You, you can save money by doing it. And, uh, <clears throat> hey, I remember. <laughs> like I say, I've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. But I remember when, you know, solid copper caskets, the, you know, which is the premium of caskets. Right. I remember when, you know, you could get that service for $2,400. Mm. And now that solid copper casket and, and services would cost you ten, twelve thousand dollars 12000 Is that right? That's amazing, yeah. Rick, you know, when you think about those. And obviously a lot of folks can't afford something like that. Direct cremation surely comes into play or... Or a much smaller, uh, but still a traditional service. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's pre-need is is the best thing that family can do, especially just like <clears throat> if your family is out of town, right? And people move down here to retire, mm -hmm. and get the pre-need done, get all that taken care of, and then if something happens to mom or dad or uncle Ann or whoever, mm -hmm. then everything is taken care of right then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it's it's. Uh, and, and then all it is is a telephone call. Takes care of everything. Who contacts the funeral home or cemetery in another area, Rick? Let's say, well, just who goes about and contacts those? All right. You know, now, <clears throat> if, uh, like, when there's a death, I took a person up to Washington, D.C., and buried him up there in the National Cemetery uh, last year. Now, if it's a national cemetery like that, you know, we, we call from here and make all the arrangements. Right. Now, if it's a small country cemetery, we have to call and get a funeral director or somebody like that there to take care of it for us. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> me being a licensed funeral director, I'm licensed in Kentucky and Tennessee and South Carolina. Three states, Three Kentucky, states. Tennessee, and South Carolina. Yeah, and I'm getting ready to write my board in North Carolina. Great. So, right. so I'll have my license there also in case I have an interment that needs to go to North Carolina. I can go up there and take care of That's it. That's tremendous. But... Uh, me being a licensed funeral director and bomber, if we're going to a national cemetery, I don't have to get a funeral director in that area. Mm. Because in national cemeteries, I'm licensed to where I can go anywhere in the United States and bury in a national cemetery. That's tremendous. But if I go to a country cemetery, a privately owned cemetery, or something in another state, I have to get a funeral director that's licensed in that state to have the interment. Right, right. So the National Cemetery, I don't have to do anything. But if you're licensed in a state, you could, let's say in South Carolina, you could perform a funeral in any of the 46 counties. Mm -hmm. Or in North Carolina, any of the 100 counties in that state. That's right. That's yeah. tremendous. So yeah. You're not just licensed for a small area, let's say Ori Georgetown or Ori Georgetown Marion. You're licensed to perform funerals anywhere in the state. That's right. And see, there's two types of license. There's a licensed funeral director or a licensed funeral director and embalmer. Mm -hmm. You can't be an embalmer without being a funeral director, but you can be a funeral director without being an embalmer. Is that right? Yeah. Why would someone uh, become a funeral director and not know how to embalm? Uh, to work funerals, they just they work up in the front of the funeral home, you know, right. they don't work in the back, and, right. and uh, they don't do anything with the preparation of the body whatsoever. And they just sell funerals, work funerals, stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Talk, meet families and do pre-needs and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Embalming's a big, a big deal. Mm -hmm. Do all bodies have to be embalmed before they are, for instance, in the shipping instance? Do they all have to be embalmed before they're shipped to New Jersey or back to Kentucky? Most, generally every time they are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been down here since 2001, since 2002, working in the funeral business, right. and I saw one that was, was shipped overseas mm -hmm. that was not embalmed. That was not embalmed? Not embalmed, Boy. but they had it, we got the person ready and out of here within just very few hours on a plane. After so, the uh, approvals had taken place and after the 24-hour waiting period, etc.? No, we didn't have to wait 24 hours on this, so we got this ready and, and done that. The 24-hour waiting period is on cremation. Oh, on cremation, yes, yes, uh, yes. I yeah. see. But, uh, yeah, it, I saw one shipped out like that mm -hmm. that, you know, that went overseas. Mm -hmm. You know, and if someone dies here mm -hmm. and... Um, or if someone dies and, and, and a loved one here has to get on an emergency flight to get back, how does someone, is, is there a time they would, if they communicate with a funeral director, how would they go yeah. on about it? Isn't there a reduced, yeah, the funeral uh, director can, reduced price possibly yeah. involved with flying? A funeral director, it's a bereavement rate. A mm -hmm. funeral director can get a hold of uh, 
of the airlines, and then the airlines turns around and they have a certain uh, section. That, I mean, people that de deals with that strictly, right. and they call you back and they get all the death information and everything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So they um, they can get a lot less expensive rate. It's it's not cheap because you know it's an immediate thing to do, but they can help a lot with that. Funeral director sure can, is. yeah. In the actual shipping itself of a loved one from mm -hmm. here to another area, Rick, just how does that, I mean, you mean putting a body on a plane, or how do you all go about working to make sure that this body is handled properly well, between here and Pine Knot, for instance? You know, we, we put the, I right, just take, if, if a person was going to Pine Knot, Kentucky, right. from here, we could take the person and put them in a casket and put them in a shipping container thing. And we take them down here to the airport cargo, and they'll load the body on the plane, mm -hmm. the cargo part will. And from here, they would fly to Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And then when they land up there, the funeral director up there would go up there to the airport and meet the plane and bring mm -hmm. the body back in the hearse. Does this happen often, Rick? Right? A very lot. Very, yeah, very right. lot. Yeah. Yeah. In this area, because it's such a big retirement area. Right. And people moving down here and dying, them going back home to be buried. So they almost always plan on being buried in the community they uh, normally, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they grew up in. And <clears throat> if they're not, and if they don't do that, a lot of people are like, say, opting for cremation right. because you know they don't want to to be buried here. And cremation is a popular uh, alternative to a traditional. Very much, real. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, very, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but. And I, I talked to a man with baseful casket the other day, and I can't remember what the he said the percentage was. But it seems like it's like forty percent or something yeah, right here in right. the in the in beach the area. Strand, right. Yeah. Mm. Now it's different when you get to Conway. Right. You don't have the cremation note right over there, but when you cross the waterway and you get over here, a lot of cremations. That's fascinating. That's Alan cool. Lee has a crematory, Steve McMillan has a crematory, and Goldfinch at the beach has a crematory. Absolutely. All, all great operators yeah. all doing their, th their, their jobs and their commitment to families mm -hmm. and to loved ones. Rick, what is it about the funeral home and the uh, funeral industry that really makes you tick? What is it that, that keeps you driving and focused on these families? S serving families. You know, because it taking care of someone. I mean, they've lost the most precious thing they have. You know, and and they have to have somebody to depend on that knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And by taking care of that family and giving them their, doing the wishes and whatever they want and making sure that their loved one's taken care of and giving a good life like appearance and all that. And you know, it's it's just, it's real satisfying, it's real re rewarding for a fa when a family comes in and just, you know, says, thank you, we, you know, we appreciate what you've done for our dad. Mm -hmm. You know, that means the world. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me think about that later this week on Friday. We're going to have Myrtle Beach's city manager with us. You know, I was thinking about, in trying to prep for his interview later this week, thinking about the city of Myrtle Beach's motto, its mission, first in service. Mm -hmm. And serving families is truly, mm -hmm. if you're first in that role, you're going to be first in many other things. If you first focus on that family going through such a tough time. Mm -hmm. Our motto at uh, my funeral home, I own my own funeral home in Kentucky for 18 years. Is that right? And our motto there was uh, our family serving your family. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Our family serving your family. Yeah. That's a good one for a family-owned operation. It's important mm -hmm. to highlight that family component and uh, serving other families. Yeah, Palmetto Funeral Home uses it now. When I was over there... Palmetto <coughs> Funeral Home uses our family serving your yeah. family? when I was over there, we, we started advertising with that, and, and Barry Watson and Joe Watson that owns the funeral home, they, they kept it. Yeah. So they're using that now. They should have. That's a great, uh, mm -hmm. a great slogan. Have any of your family gotten involved in the funeral home business since you, uh, my son Aaron, you sold your location in Pine Knot mm -hmm. and moved down here? My son Aaron, he's a licensed funeral director. Is that right? Yeah. Now he has his construction company here, but he's sure. he's a licensed funeral director in South Carolina or in Kentucky. In Kentucky. In Kentucky. Yes. Yeah. Is it pretty easy to become licensed in another state? Is there pretty common practices in in all fifty states, or are there Stark different, uh, stark it's tough. differences. It's tough to get your license. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you you go th to be an embalmer, you have to go 
take a test. Being like the funeral director, you have to take a test. Right. You have to take the state test. And I'm telling you, that's that's not an easy course to take. I mean, you know, like in mortuary school, you have embalming, you have microbiology, macrobiology, history, English, uh, law, business law, wow. uh, anatomy, restorative art. A lot of different subjects you got to cover. A lot. Mm. That does sound very difficult. Yeah. Sure glad I'm not going through that. <laughs> Probably couldn't get through. What's interesting, macro and microbiology. Rick, thanks so much for being with us this morning. I'm sorry we've run Thank out of time. Thank you for having me. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Appreciate it. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with licensed funeral director and embalmer, Rick Neal, coming up next. 25 minutes of Rick Neal sitting right here. You know, you go through those steps of licensing to become a funeral director, but also licensing to become an embalmer. There's a lot that has to happen in embalming and restorative art. A lot has to happen when bodies are shipped from here to other parts of the country or other parts of the world. You heard him talk about Israel or for bodies being shipped to this area. Some special things said on camera. I wish you could have heard the words off camera. The greatest gift he has to offer is comforting families in time of sorrow. In times of sorrow, when folks are oftentimes at their weakest. And of course, he attributes this to his loving family and his relationship with Christ. You heard him talk about his own mother and the thrill of having her down this past weekend and getting up to the Carolina Opry. The love he has with his own mother and his own family passes on to families up and down the Strand, all over the Southeast, really all over the country. Rick Neal, making a difference every day.